All right, so part A says, given the graph, state the numbers at where it is discontinuous. Basically, if I take my pen and draw, and, and then I have to kind of um, bring it up, that's going to be not continuous. So just by looking at this, do I see a hole there? So I know it's not continuous at 4. Where else? At negative 2. What's the next one? 2. And then? 4. So the way we would actually state the discontinuous would be set notation. The sideways curly bracket. So we have negative 4, negative 2, 2, and 4. That should not be a problem at all. Yes? So when we talked about limit, the way I described it was, it is doing what? Approaching. Approaching. Let's reiterate that. It does not have to get there, but closer and closer to. It is approaching. So my first point here, we're still using, using the graph. That positive right here as an exponent, that means it's from the right. From the right of the graph. So let's look at the graph. As I get to the negative 2 from the right side, I am approaching what y, y value? 2. 2, very good. And then this time I'm going to 4 from what side? Left. From left. So here, here's my 4, and here's my left. And actually, let's label something. Not sure if y'all can tell, but this right here is a vertical asymptote at x equals 4. So if you want to draw the arrow saying, hey, I know I had to cut it because I had to print it, go ahead and draw the arrow. So from the left side, if it continues to go down, how do we represent that in math? Undefined? Could I say negative infinity? And then does the limit exist or does not exist? Does not exist. So if it were to be on a test, you can give me either or. If it were to be a multiple choice, they're both not going to be on there, just one. Now let's go to 2. 2 from, is that negative there? From the left? What, what y value am I approaching? 1. And then we have, if it does not have a positive or a negative, it's saying from both sides. So 0 from the left and the right, we're coming to a common point called what? 4. The next two we also talked about already. If I do not give you the limit notation, that right there is basically a point. And if I were to write this mathematically, this is saying, what is the value of y when x equals 4? Or negative 4, right? x equals negative 4. So I'm going to go to negative 4 and write the order pair. Negative 4 comma what? 1. One. So we're going to say, what is the y value? Or does it exist? Yes, it does exist. And specifically, it is negative 4, comma 1. So what I wrote prior to that is basically algebra 1 concept. Well, are you with me? OK. And then part D is the limit. That's going to be the approaching. And I'm going to keep writing approaching. So at negative 4, here's my negative 4. From the left and the right, I know we have a hole, but it doesn't matter. What number are they both getting closer and closer to? Two. So we know, is it, does it exist? Yes, the value is 2. All right. Let's move on to the next graph. So here I gave you a new graph. The first part says, where is it discontinuous? And let's try to go in order. Give me the first number. Negative 2. Negative two. What's the one after that? 2. two. After that? 4. Four. And then? 6. six. Eight. And 8. Now here's something unique. Because 8 is the end point, it is at the end point. I'm just going to say at the end. Typically, you don't have to include it. But if you do include it, I'll take it. So typically, it is not included. And again, if you do, I'm not going to penalize you for that. Can I go ahead? What's up? Would that be the same for negative 4? For negative 4? Well, negative 4 actually has a hole. I mean, okay. it's, it's actually um, shaded in, okay. whereas 8 has a hole. Good question. Can we go ahead and write out where the um, vertical asymptote should be? Yeah? 
very, very tiny. So here I have my vertical asymptote at x equals four. So ideally, these are arrows going both ends, except my graph is quite tiny. And we're not gonna do all of these. The only one I want, I want us to focus on is the following. This one together, and then I need to add on to this so it makes sense. Let's write out limit as x approaches the six of g of x is equal to something. And then I want to highlight this piece together. They're linked. Okay, with the partner, let's go ahead and um, do the green and the pink piece. Go, talk to your neighbor. When I call on you, I want you to give me the specific part. Karis, limit as x approaches a negative two from the right. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Miles, what about from the left? Two. Do they agree with each other? So the limit does not exist on that specific part without the power. So limit as x approaches a negative two does not exist. All right, Jocelyn, limit as x approaches the uh, six from the positive. Four. Four, very good. Joe, what about from the negative? Oh, did I write negative on this one? Oh, there's a negative here. Is it negative, Is it negative four? Yes. Do we agree on each other? Yeah. So in general, limit as x approaches the six does not exist. So something I forgot to add on the very top. Silly me. One-sided limit can be infinity or negative infinity. Because on one side it could be going down, on the other it could be going up. And we already had an example on, on part B, but I did forget to mention that. All right, if you're ready for the back page, give me a thumbs up. Okay, let's start with the partner work. Here I gave you a different graph. Can you find the limit still? Go, one minute on this. Oh, that part's a little tricky, right? If you want to draw the axes right here, kind of bolded, shaded. 
Tricky, tricky. Okay, here's the first row. <laughs> if you and your neighbor had to give him a high five and say, good job. Oh, weak high fives. What is this? What is this? Look at their elbow and go high five. It didn't work, not even once? Okay, maybe look mid. <laughs> All right, the next one, let's check. I want to see a better high five once you have it with the partner. Yay. It wasn't this. It's like, <laughs> On the last one, that's a point. That is approaching. So our point at x equals 2, y value is 1. The limit is approaching positive 3. three. All right, let's do a real life example and see what the scenario is like. Which one? This one right here? So here's two, right? Two? From the right side, this is the right side of two. It's getting closer and closer to zero. All right, Jason, let's read number four, the word problem. From the left. From the left, when the approach is called from the right, and explain the significance of the one side of the limit. Basically, in words, tell me what that basically means. Okay? Now, we are approaching what number? 12. 12. So let's go to 12. And then our injection is 150, and then it, the um, dose kind of goes down because it wears off, right? And at most, it's 300. So at 12, I want to figure out from the left. So from the left on the 12 is here. So what number am I reaching? Um, 150. 150, okay, so let's write this out. Limit. Keep in mind, always write more. Repeating the statement is always welcome. As a T as it approaches 12 from the left of F of T, it is 150 milligrams. And that is the amount of drug before what? Before the next injection. So it is the amount of the drug before the injection, since he needs it every four hours. Since I gave you a model, I want you to mimic that for the right side with the neighbor. Go. So give me the description from the right side.
And when I call on you, I want you to read your whole sentence, starting with the word limit. Cole, will you read out loud what you have? Perfect. The amount of drug after the injection. If it's similar, that's fine. Don't change it. Maybe you added more words to it. Very good. Okay, the last one, let's look at it algebraically then. So we need to figure out what's happening on the left and then the right. Does it come to a common ground? So let's go ahead and write out when X is less than, it's considered left. When X is greater than, it's considered on the right side. So my first one, I need to test it from what side of the um, zero? So I need to use a top equation. We're plugging in zero in place of X. So zero plus one is equal to one. Any questions on that? Jason, are you with me? Okay. The next one, we're looking at the right side, meaning I need to plug it into the bottom one. So we have four minus zero is how many? Four. Are we agreeing to it? They're not, so I'm just going to put a sad face as in Y. So we know our limit does exist or does not exist? Does not. Does not exist. For those of you guys that are visual learners, I'm going to draw the piecewise function kind of sketch. The first one on top, we have a positive, um, positive slope, and it's actually going to the value, meaning equal to. So the graph might look something like this, but we're going to the left. The next one is starting at 4 on the y-intercept open circle, and it's doing something like this. And just by the visual, it is not, um, the limit does not exist, okay? Do you have to know how to draw it? No, know how to apply it. Is everyone good on that? Okay, let's go on to the next one then. Try actually number six with the partner. Basically, do you know your left, do you know your right? Did y'all realize top was the right? The bottom was the left? You gotta read the uh, inequality symbol. It doesn't end up mattering now. Hmm? You're right. So when we approach from the left, what value do we get to? Three. And also from the right, we get? Three. Three. So now I'm going to curly bracket and go, oh, yay, they're equal. So limit does exist, which is three. Any questions on that? All right. So then I'm going to actually do something 